my hope is that the people who see this DVD will actually have a personal experience of the goodness of God in preparing for sharing these reflections. I was looking at all the attention that we are giving, giving to the Big Bang and the beginning of, the, of creation and the cosmic reality that we share with all of creation. And in some very special way, I have this sense that even though our beginning date is 1804 for the foundation of our congregation, our charism goes all the way back to whenever God became God. And we say that God is eternal, so there was no beginning, no end. So the goodness that God is, is an eternal reality. And people who see this DVD, I hope, will experience some of God's goodness by seeing photos, hearing voices, listening to testimonies of how God's goodness is still alive and active through and in the Sisters of Notre Dame de Namur all over the world. Everything begins in the middle of the 18th century in France during the reign of Louis XVI. Julie Billard was born in 1751 in Cuvigny, a little village of Picardy. Her parents ran a small business. As a child, she already loved to pray and to take quiet time to speak to God. The study of the catechism delighted her, and from the age of eight, she taught it to her companions. She was preparing for the great work she would do and the principal mission of the congregation she was to found much later. As for Françoise Blain de Bourdon, she came from high nobility and lived comfortably while nurturing her desire to consecrate herself to God in the Carmelite community. In 1782, Julie Billard was affected by a sickness which the doctors believed to be curable by bleeding. Little by little, that led to paralysis of both legs. She was bedridden for 22 years. The life of St. Julie has touched me to the extent that I understand the experience she went through as she was sick. She went through so many difficulties. And also what attracts me in St. Julie's life, that time when she was sick, she was helpless, but she could do something for the other people. She was a source of um, a energy, a source of strength to other people, in spite of her own suffering. Though she was paralyzed, she could give life to other people. And I also guess in my own life as a sister of Notre Dame, I wish to bring life to be source, a source of uh, strength to others, same way that St. Julie did. Julie is full of vitality. Even though she has been sick in bed, many people visited her. And as a result of the visiting of Julie, many people were encouraged, inspired. It is the period of privileges given to the nobles and to the church. Only 2% of the population controlled the country, collected taxes and imposed justice. But the ideas of the Enlightenment progressively called into question this social order. Ideas that would bring about the revolutions in the United States and in France. Julie and Françoise were victims of the revolution. One for her religious convictions and her fidelity to the church, the other for her social status. The turmoil of the French Revolution created the meeting of Julie and Françoise in 1794 in Amiens. And soon after, a pious association formed around them, in spite of the terror wrought by the revolutionaries. The friendship between Julie and Françoise, a profound friendship based on the rock, the rock which is Christ for both of them. 
One sees clearly that these two friends sincerely loved one another, shared their joys and their struggles, and they had a certain confidence between themselves and a confidence in God. All was based on truth. It is thanks to this friendship that the congregation continues today. At the time of Julie, there were not yet many nationalities and different cultures in the congregation. Today we are sisters who come from many different places, but we feel a connection when we meet one another. There is something which unites us, and we feel that we are one family. A true friendship is a grace, a richness. It is a gift which enables good things to happen in what is undertaken for the congregation. With Catherine Duchatel, who was to die several months later, they made their vow of chastity and committed themselves to consecrate their lives to Christian education. They took the name of Sisters of Notre Dame. With her legs still paralyzed, Julie experienced difficulties in the realization of her apostolate. But after a novena to the Sacred Heart, she was miraculously cured on June the 1st, 1804. Afterwards, Julie was able to accompany the Fathers of the Faith to saint valery sur somme and to Abbeville, where she evangelized the people. The newborn community of the Sisters of Notre Dame grew. On October the 15th, 1805, Julie, Françoise, Victoire Leleu and Justine Garçon pronounced their religious vows. And the next day, Mother Julie was elected Superior General. On the February the 2nd, 1806, Mère Julie had a vision of the future apostolate of the congregation, which would cross the seas and carry to the world the message of the good news. On June the 19th, 1806, the articles of the association called Notre Dame were approved by Napoleon. The opening of free schools was authorized. During a long period of time, Julie underwent many trials. She had enormous patience, but always maintained her rights. And each time that she had difficulties, she said that she would entrust all to the Lord and that in his goodness he would find a path. The insistence of Julie on confidence in God, her abandonment to God, has helped me greatly in different situations. I was inspired by Julie's life. And every time I face my reality, I know now she was, she's called saint. But I think she also had the uh, weakness, uh, difficulty, even in herself. And it's a challenge for her. So when I live my time and my own character, <laughs> my weakness and difficulty, it always reminds me of St. Julie's life and give me the uh, hint how to live as a child of God. The first sisters of Notre Dame arrived in Namur and settled in a house located near the bishop's residence on July the 7th, 1807. The success of the school was so positive that on December the 6th, 1808, the sisters moved into a larger residence on the Rue des Fossés, called Rue Julie Billard in 1932. It's there that Mère Julie, obliged to leave Amiens with her congregation, arrived on January the 21st, 1809. Namur became the mother house of the Sisters of Notre Dame on February the 24th, 1809. I read the letter of century that it said that it is possible that you are called to save the soul of only one person. And with this passage, I understood how Julie valued each person as if he or she is the only one in the world.
Mère Julie established numerous institutions in both France and Belgium, traveling sometimes in a coach, on a donkey, or often by walking long distances. She visited the established communities and wrote numerous letters to the sisters. From her lips or in her letters, these words were often repeated. Oh, how good is the good God. I joined the sisters in 1965. And since then, obviously, I've studied St. Julie's spirituality. We were brought up when I was in the novitiate on Julie's conferences and Julie's later on Julie's letters when they were published. And that has influenced my life very much indeed. And I think through Julie's simplicity, and Julie's prayer life, my own prayer life has become very much Trinitarian and contemplative. On December the 7th, 1815, Mother Julie had a bad fall. On January the 14th, 1816, she was confined to her bed and on April the 8th, she died peacefully. After Julie died, Mère Saint-Joseph was elected Superior General the first of a succession of superiors general who proclaimed the message of Julie. The church recognized Julie's sanctity. On May the 13th, 1906, the beatification of the humble servant of God, Julie Billard, was celebrated in Rome under the pontificate of St. Pius X, and she was canonized on June the 22nd, 1969, by Pope Paul VI, who declared in his panegyric, we perceive in Julie Billard a conformity to the image of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, which reveals to us an affection and a predestination on the part of God in regard to this soul. Her history reveals to us an evangelical light which places her so near to our affection and makes us listen with so much joy to her affable conversation, so modest but wise, which concludes with this exclamation which characterizes her entirely, how good is God. The seed sown by Julie germinates to give life to a congregation rooted today throughout many countries. Inspired by her spirituality, her sisters proclaim the good news throughout the world. Belgium, France, Japan, the United States, Congo, Italy, Kenya, Peru, Nigeria, South Africa, Great Britain, Zimbabwe, Brazil and Nicaragua. Julie Billiard's plant was rooted in Congo in 1894. And in 1959, the Belgian sisters accepted the first Congolese sister. Today, we are 123 sisters, 110 perpetually professed, and 13 sisters with temporary vows. Faithful to the spirit of Julie and Françoise, we continue their work in formal education and in other ministries. We work to educate women so that they understand their rights and their talents so that they can be useful in society. I want to add that from the example of our Belgian sisters, the Congo now sends missionary sisters to other countries. We have sisters who work in South Africa, Kenya, 
and even here in Belgium. And we have already had two sisters who served as members of the general government of the congregation. We are proud to contribute a little to the universal mission of the church and especially to the international level of the congregation. And in Nigeria, we do many ministries. We teach, we work in the hospitals like healthcare, we do pastoral work like teaching of catechism. And um, as St. Julie, our foundress said, in one of her letters, she said, when uh, children come to school without school fees, that we should not send them away. And this, it has not been easy in Nigeria. But because of the love St. Julie has for the poor, we try as much as we can to give free education for the poor children who cannot pay for their school fees. Different things happen in our life today that cause us to do something we never did before. Whether it's working with the immigrant people or working, uh, living and working with women who have been trafficked, being concerned for, um, for the poor and the homeless, just as she was. If there was trafficking going on at that time, Julie would be there. And also the boldness she had in what she believed. She wasn't afraid of um, facing the authority of the church when, she, when it was a justice issue. She was there for the people and, and uh, someone along, in something I read recently about her, said that um, when they saw her, they felt they were seeing the walking love of God. The world has become so much smaller, and by that be, I mean that wherever we live and work today, we're in a world community because we're, we're always coming with and ministry-wise or neighborhood-wise, shopping-wise, cultures of people that, that, you know, all of a sudden, you're with Muslims, you, you're with Latinos, you, you're with Asians, you I mean, it's just such a wonderful world. Other congregations have been inspired by Julie's spirituality or were founded by the Sisters of Notre Dame. Our cousins and the associates also live the message of Julie. Founded in 1822, the Congregation of the Sisters of Notre Dame of Amersfoort is present in Holland, Indonesia, Malawi, the Philippines and Malaya, and is engaged in education, pastoral work and care of the sick. The Sisters of Notre Dame of Coesveld have been present in Germany since 1850. Their principal work is education, and they're also involved in clinics, administration of homes for the aged, and care for abandoned children, as well as special education for the handicapped. One can also call to mind the Little Children of Mary in Shikuni, the Sisters of Mary of Kisantu, and the Sisters of the Nativity of Our Lady. Since 1968, the congregation has associates, men and women who identify with the spirit, life and mission of Notre Dame, and wish to associate themselves with the Sisters of Notre Dame, our mission and spirituality. Other groups of persons without being associates feel equally linked to the Sisters of Notre Dame. We have the Amis de Saint-Julie in France, groups of Julie no Kai in Japan, and other persons associated with Notre Dame in Africa, Britain, and Latin America.
Sister Dorothy began her ministry in Brazil in 1966, and she moved to Anapu in 1983, about 700 kilometers south of Belém. A citizen of Brazil and the United States, Sister Dorothy worked with the Pastoral Land Commission, an organization of the Catholic Church that fights for the rights of rural workers and peasants. She was assassinated on February the 12th, 2005, by two hired killers, pistoleros. Before her murder in 2005, Sister Dorothy was named Woman of the Year by the state of Pará for her work in the Amazon region. We worked together at that time with the priest Padre Amaro and a team, and we continue the work until today. When Dorothy was murdered in 2005, she was working with two sustainable development projects. Each of the projects was programmed to have 180 families. Nowadays, these two projects continue. Belief in God's goodness was the source of Julie's spirituality and the inspiration for her prayer. I am touched by the spirituality of Julie, her simplicity, her courage and her deep trust. This has an effect on my daily life. I live simplicity first in my prayer to God. I speak to him as to a friend, so I have very open and simple contact with him. And if there are difficult things, I just tell this to God. At the same time, I trust that help comes. Even as I'm expecting it now, and it does not come immediately, to live in trust, knowing it comes. Her prayer penetrated her life, gave it meaning, and enabled her to fulfill her mission to love God and bring others to this love of God. Saint Julie has always said, Oh, how good is the good God! She believed this statement and began a great work which continues even today. She began by educating especially the poor young girls of her time. Now we in Peru continue this work of formal and informal education. We work with small children, older children and teenagers, as well as in adult education. Through education we desire to spread this message throughout the world. Oh, how good is the good God, as St. Judy did in educating the people. Let us remember that an uneducated people is a people who will not make any progress, and Julie understood that well when she left us this heritage. She believed that whatever happened, God was in control. She experienced God as a loving father, even when tested by trials and suffering. Julie's whole being was totally focused on God. Direct, single-minded, uncomplicated, and ready to respond whenever God called. As a disciple of Jesus, Julie knew the inevitability of the cross in her life. She experienced trials and suffering. She also believed that it was through the cross that she would experience resurrection and new life. We work in communities of African descendants, the Quilombolas. The communities are very poor, and we accompany them in their struggles in defense of the land, life and dignity. And what this has to do with the work of St. Julie is that she chose the poorest in the most abandoned places. Julie's total commitment to God produced great joy, which was evident to all. She felt the joy of God's goodness, and she radiated that joy. She was known as the Smiling Saint. She cried out everywhere, how good is the good God? I try to do the same. It is so touching. It is so deep, clearly, in all that I do. And when we talk about spirituality of Julie in my life, 
I see my life flows from Judy's life and Judy's spirituality directs me in all that I do. Clearly and loudly, I try with my life every day to show that truly God is good. As we say it in our local language, Mungu ni mwema kweli. The good God is very good. Julie took as her model Mary, mother of Jesus, who gave Jesus to a waiting world. Julie knew that she was called to take the good news across the world. I believe that what characterizes her the most is the fact that she dared to do what women would not dare to do. And I think that she's marvelous from this point of view. Like Julie, the constant refrain of her sisters today is, how good is the good God? The congregation worked with the architect David Lucaccioni to develop and design the Heritage Center. The curved lines and the light guides and immerses the visitor in the story of Julie and Francoise. A dark and sober wall crosses at an angle the symbolic edifice of the solidness of her faith and the journey of Julie's faithfulness to her convictions. Finally, the mosaic ribbon represents the contribution that each sister in the congregation makes to perpetuate and make alive the charism of Julie today. An impressive wall in black contains the names of every sister in the congregation who pronounced her first vows. As an archivist and historian, the Heritage Centre exposition was a magnificent project where we researched documents, images, photos, all sorts of archival material, but also objects, mementos of Julien Francois, mementos of their youth, as well as souvenirs as superior general. There are different themes which are treated in different ways. First of all, there is a time to meet Julie and Françoise. There's another important time in the Heritage Centre, and that is today's time, because the centre is not only a museum in which one finds documents and papers and photos. We wanted to show that the message of Julie is always present among the Sisters of Notre Dame. What touches me in this exposition is the international part, where one is able to see that the Sisters are present throughout the world working for the poor and the deprived. Julie's message will always remain living and the work of the Sisters of Notre Dame will always be important. The heritage is our history. Uh, it traces the past, the present and the future of our family, our congregation. We are an international congregation on five continents in 14 different countries. And that brings many different cultures, traditions, languages. And it's important for us to, to guard this, this heritage of ours for as long as we can. And in our congregation, we have many books, uh, documents, letters that tell the story of Julie and Francoise, of uh, the beginnings of our congregation, the charism. But the Heritage Center makes this written word come alive. Uh, you can experience uh, Julie's faith, uh, Julie's love of her good God, her confidence in him, the seal which she wanted to prepare her students for life, and making sure that her sisters were prepared to go into the classroom. Her courage and her serenity, even in the darkest times, so we as Sisters of Notre Dame hope that everyone who experiences the wonder of our Heritage Center will know and experience the goodness of God and be able to say with Julie, Ah, qu'il est bon de bon Dieu.